Are you thinking of becoming a web developer in 2025, but you're unsure where to begin? In this video, I'll break down everything you need to get started. We'll cover the most in-demand frameworks, how to build real projects, how to land your first clients, how to become a freelancer or a business owner on top of that as well, once you're good as a developer. So why listen to me in the first place? Well, I've helped more than 700 agencies and freelancers get started, and I've been in the industry for 15 years myself. By the way, the best tip you can get on how to become a developer and more specifically a web developer is to hit that like button on the video, which is free and helps out the channel a lot. So the first thing we're gonna talk about is the right tech stack. The first step in becoming a web developer is choosing the right stack. This is actually crucial because the technologies you choose will shape your entire learning path and define the kinds of projects you're able to build and the types of clients you can find. So for 2025, the front end stacks that I recommended are JavaScript frameworks like React, they're still dominating, but Vue.js and even Svelte are gaining traction. In the back end, we're looking at Node.js. It remains popular, but frameworks like Django, which is Python, and Ruby and Rails are also strong contenders. There's some pretty good projects in those as well. In terms of full stack development, the MERN stack, so MongoDB, Express, React, and Node.js is a favorite among many developers due to its versatility and unified language, which is JavaScript. Which stack you pick depends on your interest, the type of projects you want to work on and the demand in the market. I'll help you figure out what aligns best with your goals so you can hit the ground running, but you can just go with the stack that I just gave you. So most developers, they aspire to be full stack developers, which involves both front end and back end skills, allowing you to handle every aspect of a web application. This versatility makes full stack developers highly valuable as they can build entire projects independently or contribute to both parts of a larger team project. Here's how to approach learning full stack development. So first you learn the basics of front end, start with HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. These are the core technologies for building the user interface of any web application. You should be comfortable creating layouts, styling pages, and adding interactivity to your websites and other things that you're building. Once you have the basics down, learn a popular front end framework, like what I mentioned before, React, Vue.js, or Angular. These frameworks will help your development process uh, be more efficient and help you build complex interactive user interfaces. In terms of backend, we're looking at how servers, databases, and APIs work. Start with language like JavaScript, which is Node.js. You'll need to understand how to create RESTful APIs, manage databases, write server-side logic. So databases, I'm the least familiar with this myself. It's not my forte, but just to give you a summary of what to learn, you'll need to learn about SQL, so things like MySQL for rational databases, uh, as well as no SQL options like MongoDB. Understanding how to design, query, and manage databases is essential for full-stack projects. And by the way, we, for our own project, which is a SaaS for lead generation, we use MongoDB because it's awesome. So then you need to practice full stack projects. So apply what you've learned by building full stack projects. Start with simple applications like a to-do list or a block platform that involves both front end and back end elements. So a CMS and a front end. This hands-on practice will help you understand how different parts of an application interact. Use the MERN stack, a great way to learn full stack is by using the MERN stack, which I mentioned before, MongoDB, Express, React, Node.js. This stack covers everything you need to know, uh, React for front end, Express, and Node.js for, for back end, and MongoDB as the database. The MERN stack is popular because it allows you to use JavaScript throughout the entire application. Then you need to learn about version control and deployment. Learn to use Git for version control and GitHub to showcase your projects. You should also learn how to deploy your applications using services like uh, Netlify, Heroku, or AWS. We use AWS for our projects. So deployment is an important skill that allows you to take a project from concept to a live product. Not everyone watching this is new, but if you're new, the choice I would make is to go for full stack. And um, it basically offers a lot of flexibility in the projects you can take on, and it opens up more opportunities in both freelancing and full-time positions by focusing on building practical projects and keeping up with industry developments, you're able to master full stack development over time. You can start with front end and then master everything over time as well. Uh, most developers that I interviewed, they started front end or back end, and then they became full stack like three years down the line or two years down the line, depending how fast they learn. So what are these projects for front end, back end, and full stack developers? Understanding these types of projects and uh, what falls under which type of skill set is crucial learning the right skills for your career path. Here's a breakdown. So front end development focuses on everything user interacts with directly examples of front-end projects that you're likely to face when talking to clients 
or interviewing, being interviewed for jobs or landing pages. So it's like a static or dynamic landing page for a product or a service using HTML, CSS, and JavaScript frameworks like React and Vue.js. Um, another example is interact user interfaces. So creating an interactive UI for an e-commerce product page or dashboard using frameworks like React and Angular. Then you have a type of project that's called an SPA, single page application. Uh, basically, you're developing SPAs that provide seamless navigation without refreshing the page, such as a portfolio site or a task management app. This is like almost everything you're using these days, by the way. So it's crucial you know and learn how to use this and build this. Another type of project you might want to work on is form validation UI components. So building form validation tools, drop down menus, carousels and other reusable UI components. To learn these skills, start with HTML, CSS, JavaScript, and move on to frameworks like React, Vue.js, and Svelte. Uh, platforms like Codecademy, Free Code Camp, Udemy, and YouTube provide beginner to advanced tutorials. You can pretty much learn this for free in most situations, but you want to practice if you learn for free. You want to practice a lot, a lot more than someone who's getting coached, for example. So another type of project you're likely to face when doing that is RESTful API. So creating APIs that handle data exchange between the front end and the back end, such as a product catalog API for an e-commerce site. That's a very specific example there that you might very likely to face. Uh, another example is user authentication systems, building a backend system for user login, registration, and authentication using frameworks like Django, Flask, or ExpressJS. Another one is database management. So setting up a database to manage and store data such as user profiles, products, and orders using SQL, et cetera, the stuff that I mentioned before, we use MongoDB. Another type of project is going to be CRUD applications. So developing applications that involve creating, reading, updating, and deleting records, such as inventory management and blog platforms. This one's huge. Like you can make a lot of money if you know this stuff. Another type of project, which can make you a huge amount of money, by the way, if, if you're in the right industry, uh, is developing applications that involve creating, reading, updating, and deleting records, such as inventory management or blog platforms. Like inventory management stuff, that stuff is tricky. It needs to be perfect. But if you can build and sell stuff like that, it is very, very profitable. Uh, boring, though, for most people. Then what are full stack projects? So full stack projects involve both front end and back end elements, allowing you to practice the complete development process. So example Examples of these types of projects are e-commerce websites. I don't need to explain to you what an e-commerce website is. It's basically a website that sells products, uh, social media applications, uh, task management app. That's a very specific type of example of a full stack development project. Another one is blog platforms. So building a platform where users can create accounts, write, edit, and delete blog posts. And uh, basically whatever they do appears in the front end. So once you've chosen your tech stack, you'll want to get to building real projects as soon as possible. This is where you truly learn by doing. And it's also how you can create a portfolio that showcases your work, potential clients and employers. By the way, you can use a huge amount of AI help with this, but you, if you don't understand what it's doing, you could build something and it'll work. And then when it breaks, you won't know how to fix it. And AI has these crazy blind spots where essentially you need a real developer to fix things. So you don't want to just rely on AI, even though I have friends who've built like Instagram alternatives using AI only, they're not even developers. Um, they still get stuck and they need help of a real developer to troubleshoot because the AI cannot do that in many situations. You can also clone projects or recreate well-known apps like a simple to-do list, a weather app, or even basic e-commerce store. These will help you understand how real world applications are built. And you can say, I built an alternative to so-and-so. Here it is. It's live right now. The key here is consistency. The more projects you build, the more confident you'll become and the more skillful you'll become. You'll need to code every day for as long as you want to be a developer. Otherwise, you're going to lose your skills very quickly. And, uh, you know, there's really no point to this video in that case. Now is the fun stuff, okay? Maybe some people don't like this part, but this is my favorite spot. It's time to find your clients. I recommend starting an Upwork. It's where I've seen beginners find the most success. Create a strong profile that highlights your skills and showcases your portfolio and make it sound like you're writing a letter to a human, not this super technical list of skills that you have. And even if it's just a personal project for now, uh, it's worth starting on Upwork as soon as possible. Early on, it's about building a track record. So start with a smaller, easier project, especially if you're a beginner, to get some reviews under your belt. If you haven't used Upwork before, Upwork charges for Connect. So anyone you reach out to to do their project, you better make sure it's the right fit based on what you've written. Uh, otherwise, you know, you're kind of wasting Connects and it costs a lot of money. So if you don't have a big budget, 
budget like fifteen hundred dollars a month, then you, you have to be very careful with who you contact and uh, be prepared that it takes several months. But once you match your skills to what the client wants and you get them on a call, basically you can you can get really good projects on there. Quality over quantity is key here if you're on a limited budget, especially as each proposal costs you money, as I said three times already. So once you get some experience, you can start being more ambitious. If you do have a budget to like 1500 bucks a month to spend on Upwork lead generation, um, I suggest doing it. It's like a really good platform, but you're gonna have to play what they call the volume game. You're not going to win every bid, by, by, but by targeting projects that are in the right country, that are a good fit for uh, what you want to do, what you can do, and that don't, don't have too many proposals sent to them yet, you'll gradually start landing jobs. Uh, the best approach is to build momentum through smaller wins and then leverage those successes to take on a larger, more profitable project. So you can also look outside of freelancing platforms. You can reach out to local businesses or join online communities in your niche. Sometimes direct networking can yield opportunities, but it is much harder than doing Upwork. That's why you pay Upwork. Uh, that's my recommendation. So some of this stuff sounds exactly what you should do for 2024, and we're talking about 2025 here. So what are some trends in 2025? So as we move into 2025, backend development is evolving with several important trends shaping the way developers build and manage server-side applications. So staying up to date with these trends will help you stay competitive and build more efficient, scalable applications. So here are some trends. So serverless computing is becoming more popular because it allows developers to focus on writing code without worrying about managing the underlying infrastructure. Uh, so platforms like AWS Lambda, Azure Functions, and Google Cloud Functions are making serverless more accessible. This trend is ideal for developers looking to create scalable applications without the overhead of server management. Another trend is microservices. So microservices architecture continues to gain momentum. Instead of building monolithic applications, developers are splitting apps into smaller independent services. This allows for easier scalability, better maintainability, and faster deployment. Tools like Docker and Kubernetes, I don't know how to pronounce that, are crucial for managing microservices effectively. Another trend is GraphQL. Uh, it's continuing to grow as an alternative to REST APIs. Another trend is API-first development. So many companies are adopting an API-first approach, meaning APIs are designed and built before the front end. This allows different teams, so front end, back end, mobile, to work in parallel, improving the overall development efficiency. Tools like Postman and Swagger are popular for API documentation and testing. Another trend is probably going to be for big companies, but it's, it's edge computing. So edge computing is basically processing data closer to its source to reduce latency and improve performance. This trend is particularly important for applications that require real-time data processing, like live streaming platforms that we all know. Uh, another trend is cyber threats. So they keep evolving and AI is going to, you know, hack all our passwords or whatever. Trends like zero trust architecture and improved OAuth implementations are becoming more relevant to ensure data integrity and security. Developers should also pay attention to compliance standards like GDPR and CCPA and all this kind of stuff. But, you know, when you're totally new, I wouldn't look into that too much. It'll make your head hurt. Um, another obvious trend is everyone talks about this. You should probably mention that early on is AI and machine learning. So AI and machine learning are being integrated into backend systems for data processing, recommendations, and automations. Uh, you, you're going to have to learn this stuff. So frameworks like TensorFlow and PyTorch combined with cloud services like AWS SageMaker are making it easier to add AI capabilities to backend applications. Another trend is web performance optimization. By the way, I love web performance optimization. If you go to my site, usually the number one focus on my site personally is how fast it fucking loads. But uh, basically, it's all about user experience when you're talking about website performance optimization. Uh, Front-end developers are optimizing uh, for core web vitals, so metrics that assess a website's performance, such as load speed and visual stability. A pretty cool trend is WebAssembly. So WebAssembly is gaining traction as it allows developers to run high-performance code, such as C++ or Rust, directly in the browser. This trend is opening up new possibilities for web development, especially for applications requiring heavy computation. So if you're still here, here's the next video to watch. Please just go watch that. Uh, we're going to talk about my one of my favorite topics, which is getting your first clients, uh, exactly what to write them, exactly what to talk about on the sales call to get the client, uh, exactly how to turn that into an agency. So click on the video below in the description, and we will continue our conversation there. See you there, and leave a like and comment if you like the video.